arguably Kodak's most widely used black and white film developer, D76 is not a one shot like Rodnall or HC110, but instead a powder you mix all at once, then use at full strength and reuse it or dilute it and dispose of it. But which is better? Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here, and in today's experiment, we take a look at the dilution differences of Kodak D76. In my comparisons, I only change a single variable if I can help it. In today's experiment, I needed two identical frames from the same strip of film and developed in separate tanks. I needed a photo that had both highlights and shadows and something that you could recognize, a skyline sunset. I used a handheld light meter to gauge a good average and also compared that with my camera's meter, a Nikon FE, and both gave the same result. I chose to overexpose slightly, I got a reading of 1 over 160 and went 1 125. In hindsight, I suppose I could have used exposure compensation, but it worked out fine and we are more concerned about how they compare to each other anyway. I shot all my frames quickly. Both photos that you'll see in today's example were shot within a minute of each other. In the darkroom, I separated two strips into their own tanks and developed each one as normal, except one I did at 1 plus 2 and the other at full strength or if you really want to be specific, one plus zero. <laughs> Why bother looking at these differences? Control. Control of the negative and control of your wallet. Typically D76 comes in a bag that mixes into one gallon or 3.8 liters. Now this is interesting because D76 is a reusable developer. You can get a replenisher to further its life as well, but it only works at full strength. Kodak's data sheet says that if you dilute, it is not recommended that you reuse or replenish. Now, I am sure someone out there who's been using D76 since I was knee high to a grasshopper will tell me there is a way, but for this demonstration, we will go based on Kodak's recommendation. So 3.8 liters of stock D76, you can develop 16 rolls of 35 millimeter film. Here's where it gets tricky. You need to add 15% to your time for every four rolls you develop to compensate for the exhaustion of the developer. The first four rolls of Triax in our example would be developed at 6 minutes 45 seconds. Rolls 5 to 8 would be 7 minutes 46 seconds. Rolls 9 to 12 would be 8 minutes 56 seconds. And finally, rolls 13 to 16 would be 10 minutes and 16 seconds. The grand total for all of that is 2 hours, 14 minutes and 54 seconds. A 1 plus 2 dilution called for a 13 minute development, but that never goes up. After 16 rolls, it's 3 hours and 28 minutes. That's only 73 minutes longer, but it should be noted that the last 4 rolls of full strength development runs at a time only 2 minutes and 44 seconds less. More of your time is saved in the first few rolls when the chems are still fresh. If I use dilution 1 plus 2, I can also develop 38 individual rolls, over twice the amount. Before I show you the scans, there are a few things to keep in mind here, like exposure differences shot to shot due to the slight variation of shutter speed and the setting sun. The slight curve differences of the film when being scanned, as well as the crop of each frame. Not to mention any slight variation in the exposure of the scanner. Lastly, the temperature differences in the developer. I tried to get to 68 Fahrenheit exactly, but there's probably a half to one degree variation. I should also mention that different films will yield different results. I'm using Triax because it's an old, readily available, popular black and white film. It's a forgiving film. So while you may get the same kind of results with different films, the degree of severity may be more or less dramatic. Okay, here are the scans. I'll leave them up, unlabeled for a few seconds each, side by side, so you can get a good look. These scans have no editing to them whatsoever, but you still have to consider YouTube's rendering and your monitor. When I got the 
the negatives out of the tank, I'll admit I had a hard time telling the difference. It was easier after it dried. Things seem to be more uniform here. Full strength has more detail in the highlights, while the OnePlus 2 has more detail in the shadows. Let's have a look at the histograms. They are both pretty similar all the way across, which is in line with my visual inspection. If you shift the histogram over, they are pretty close except for the shadows and a tiny bit in the midtones. If anything, the highlights seem to be the least affected. Interesting. The last thing to mention here is sharpness. If you look closely at this tower here called the Bow Tower, you can see the OnePlus 2 is sharper, but not by leaps and bounds. Um, but the pattern in the building is more noticeable here. Scanners can give some great info, but I don't think it's without its drawbacks. The only way I was going to see the whole picture was to come back here into the darkroom. I made a series of test strips, and here's the breakdown of that. My goal here was to see how the image rendered on paper and how the grain looks in the highlights. I made four strips, two from each negative. Using the enlarger, I set out to make a small section of the biggest enlargement. To do this, I set my enlarger all the way up to the top. In this case, 22 inches long is as big as I can get with my current setup. My test strips were 5x7 glossy RC sheets. I did one strip with a 2.5 contrast filter at 10 second intervals and the other with a number 5 filter at 40 second intervals. Doing this for both negatives and developing in Dectal. I did the number 2.5 strips just to see what a generic exposure looked like. Some of this is just about personal taste, but from the OnePlus 2 strip, I would have gone with around a 20 second exposure and the stock would likely be a 25 second exposure. I thought if I did a long exposure with the number 5 contrast filter, I could bring out as much grain as possible in the highlights, thus being able to see how it was affected. I would expose the hell out of the highlights, and the tiny black grains would poke through, so to speak. Whether you were comparing stock to OnePlus 2, or with contrast filters, the differences are not nearly as striking, usually just one increment over. So for example, 80 seconds through a contrast 5 filter with a OnePlus 2 negative looks pretty close to a 120 second exposure with a full strength negative. Okay, now that I have finished grain gawking and all these samples, what do I think? This was my first time trying D76 and I have to say I really like the quality of the negative and look forward to doing a direct comparison to another developer soon. As far as the battle between whether to use it at stock or dilute it, my vote is to dilute it. The visual difference isn't dramatic in scan or in print, and you'll get more than twice the life from it. I'm sure there are other differences and benefits that I missed here. I would love to read them in the comments below, but my gut says to dilute it. Like when it's fresh and I am shooting at box speed and go full strength when it's been on the shelf for a few months, or I need to soup it at 1600 ISO. I hope I saved you some time here so you can do more important things like get out there and shoot. This is a fun experiment, but let's not get too lost in the details. Well, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this experiment. If you did, agitate that like button and be sure to invert that subscribe button. If you really like what I do around here, please consider becoming my patron on Patreon. I have a whole mess of new and upgraded benefits starting at just $1 a month. Also, until February 14th, I will be giving away one of these Stay Classic Edition 35mm film holders by Camerdactyl for anyone that signs up to my Golden Knight level. There will be other ways to get a hold of one of these in the future, but for now, this is it. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and until next time, stay classic.